Hello and welcome to Small Screen Maniac. I'm Constance Miller. This is going to be a spoiler discussion for Masters of the Universe Revolution, the animated Netflix series, so if you don't want to be spoiled, stop this video, go watch the show, come back, and we can discuss in the comments. If you've already watched the show or don't mind being spoiled, then feel free to continue. Instead of running through the whole plot of the show, which is only five episodes, I'm just going to kind of break this down by character and what I think of each character on the show. So let's start with He-Man. Once again, Prince Adam and He-Man are being portrayed by Chris Wood, and he does an excellent job with portraying the dynamics between Prince Adam and He-Man. It's like they're two different people, but they're the same person, obviously, and it's no longer a secret that Prince Adam is He-Man. It's wide out and into the open, and he has to make a decision now whether he wants to rule as king or go off gallivanting on adventures as He-Man because his father, King Randor, has passed away. This adds some depth to Prince Adam, instead of him just being the weak little cowardly impish character that he's usually portrayed as and and it also gives death to He-Man because he's much more than just the power that is bestowed on him. He's got a massive heart and Chris Wood does that really well and that is a key element to the characterization of He-Man and Prince Adam. And this series gives him a lot more to do. And he's also got a burgeoning love interest with Tila. So let's move on to Tila. Now Tila is the sorceress now and she's being portrayed by Melissa Benoist and she replaces Sarah Michelle Geller from Revelation. And Tila is on a mission to restore Paternia. Uh, heaven, if you will, and it's especially important now that King Randor has passed away, so that way his soul can take his place in Bretonia and be rewarded for all his hard work, and it's a tribute to Adam as well to make sure that his father reaches the afterlife. So she's working hard, and she's exhausted all of her options so she goes to the soul of her mother the former sorceress and she tells Tila that she's got to unite the three different types of magic in order to restore Paternia so that is Tila's quest you know there's got to be some way that the hero's plan gets thwarted and of course it's by Skeletor now going by Skeletech because he's been infused with technology and is deliciously portrayed once again by Mark Hamill. I still wish that he got away from the Joker voice a little bit. It, it was just too, too familiar. And I know that Mark Hamill has depth and range, so I don't know why he chose to still put that jokery kind of spin on Skeletor slash Skeletech. Um, but yeah, so Skeletech is basically working for Motherboard and Hordak, and the Horde is taking over and Skeletech is part of a plan to thwart uh, the rise of Prince Adam as king 
and that all comes about when Keldor, the bastard brother of King Randor, shows up and wants to lay claim to the throne. Wow. But that's not where it ends. Keldor, King Randor's half-brother, is half-alien. And there was going to be no place for him on Eternia. So as a child, he was banished back to his homeworld, where, essentially, he was taken in by Hordak, and Hordak introduced him to magic and technology, but magic especially, and that created Skeletor. So Skeletor is Prince Adam's uncle. I do need to mention that the voice actor for Keldor is William Shatner, and it took me a while to get it, and I was like, oh my gosh, is that William Shatner? This has got to be William Shatner. And then, so when I was doing research for this video, I looked at the cast list and I was like, yes, I knew it. I knew it. It's just one of those geek moments within me that I had that just made me feel really proud. Moving on to Hordak. He is portrayed by the legendary Keith David, and what a performance he gives. Hordak is subtle and manipulative and enigmatic, and it was portrayed so wonderfully by Mr. David. And the only thing that I would have to gripe about is that there wasn't much for him to do. He had one major fight with Skeletor, Skeletech, and he was pretty much killed. And that was the end of it. We did get one little glimpse in the past of him abducting a baby. And those of us who know Masters of the Universe lore, uh, we know what that is. And... Oh, do I want to spoil that? I might as well. Most of you guys know what it is. But he abducts Prince Adam's twin sister, Adora, and basically raises her. Um, and they showed the glimpse of him leaving the royal castle with a baby and King Randor and Queen Marlena in the nursery just holding only one child. So, yeah. Why... Randor and Merlena don't remember this is probably because Hordak was described as a memory manipulator. So he probably manipulated the memory of it ever happening and that's gonna set up something in the future which I think they hint at again which I'll get at toward the end of the video. Now we get on to Man of War who is formerly Man-at-Arms, and is Tila's father, Duncan, and he is portrayed by Liam Cunningham once again. And there wasn't really a whole lot for him to do in this part of the series. Um, he got nice new armor. Uh, that was really nice. And he's still active. Um, and he has been put in charge of restoring the Sword of Power after Skeletech infected Eternos with this Technovirus and it affected the Sword of Power. So he and Orko uh, go find Gwildor, which I'll get to him in a little bit, to see if he can retune the sword so that it's able to be used by Prince Anime. Evil Link comes into play about halfway through the five episode series and she's once again portrayed by Lena Headey as we know from Game of Thrones and she 
she has a really powerful story arc where she becomes more of an anti-hero here than a villain, even though they still question her loyalties on both sides. And by the end, she, she gets redeemed, actually. So it's going to be really interesting to see where they take her, because if she remains good, what's the fun in that, right? So there's an end credit sequence uh, where a mysterious female figure with a Hordak mask um, is trying to restore Hordak's lifeless body. And she mentions Horde Prime, and she removes the mask, just as some smoke goes up to cover her identity. I believe it's Adora, and she is obviously under the power of the Horde, and which is what basically happened to her in the original series. Um, even though this is supposed to take place after all that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how that's really going to work out. Hmm. Unless, unless the mysterious female figure is Shadow Weaver. That could be a possibility. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Huh. So on to some honorable mentions. Um, the first being, um, Grandemir. Um, Grandemir is the wise dragon that Sila has to encounter in order to get the Staff of Ka, I think it is. Anyways, one of the three staffs. She already has the Staff of Zor. Um, and... That's where she encounters Evil Lynn, and Evil Lynn has been kind of nursing Granamir. And Granamir is voiced by John Delancey, which I never would have guessed. And that makes me giddy because I was just like, yay, what a wonderful surprise. <laughs> Up next is Gwildor. Now, Gwildor was an interesting addition to the series because if you know who Gwildor is, that means you watched the 1987 film Masters of the Universe. He was a non-canon character that was introduced into the movie and, um, and they put him into the show. And, um, Ted Bessielli, uh, does the voice of Gwildor, and he sounds just like Billy Bart. Oh, is it Billy Barty? Or Billy Bart? Billy Barty, yeah. Billy Barty was the actor that played Gwildor in the 1987 film, and Ted Bassielli does the voice of Gwildor for Revolution, and he sounds so much like Billy Barty. It, I, when I looked to see if the actor was the same, I was shocked that it wasn't. So, that annoying little character from the 87 film is now canon to Masters of the Universe lore. It's interesting to see how they're going to weave the rest of the cast, in, if they do. Andra, uh, voiced by Tiffany Smith, is the new man at arms, obviously, uh, coming over from Revelation. And she's really not given a whole lot to do. She's given some cool armor. Um, she has a very, very, very minor story arc. And that is really a shame to me because with with Revelation being so centric on, ooh, excuse me, 
centric on female characters. Um, Revelation was very much Tila's story. And Andra was a big part of that. And to see her kind of put on the back burner for a male character or male characters. Um, most of the women in the show were sidelined, um, except for Tila. Um, and that was kind of disappointing. At one point, um, when Tila was finally merging all three, uh, staffs of magic, you know, Adam got the sort of power back and he was able to help Tila out, which I thought, Dagnabbit, she should have been able to do it on her own. And that kind of really disappointed me, but... It happened, and she's now more powerful than ever. And Andra is just there. So, but she might become a politician now. So we'll see what happens with that. Queen Marlena needs a little bit of a shout out here because she is now being voiced by Gates McFadden of Star Trek The Next Generation fame, taking over the role from Alicia Silverstone. And... That was another one of those, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was Gates McFadden. Yay, that's so super cool. Geek out moment, yet again. Um, so I did want to give a shout out to Gates McFadden. And yeah, I hope she returns. The character of Motherboard was introduced at the end of Revelation. And... I thought that she would have played a much bigger part in this series. I mean, I understand that there was a lot to fit in five episodes, but she met her demise um, via Skeletech. Um, but the really cool thing about Motherboard was that she's voiced by Meg Foster, who portrayed Evil Lynn in the 1987 film Masters of the Universe. So that was a nice little nod right there. Um, her her look and aesthetic was really awesome. I'm kind of excited to get her action figure. There's going to be a lot more action figures I'm going to need to have in my collection now because of this show. I'm not really complaining. It brings a smile to my face. Well, that is going to do it for the spoiler discussion for Masters of the Universe Revolution. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you like the show? What parts did you like? What do you think they could have improved on? Let's talk. Let's talk. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. There's the notification bell if you want to be notified whenever Renslin Productions uploads a video. Also, if you're inclined to help the channel grow, you can do so by following the links in the description. And as always, love and light to you all.